Welcome to section 7.1. All right, gentle people, we're going to start a new chapter, chapter 7, and it's going to be on acids and bases. Now, there's a couple of different ways to go ahead and define what an acid and a base is. The first definition is the Arrhenius definition, and the Arrhenius definition really pertains to things in water. For something to be considered an acid, it has to produce H plus ions in water. For example, HCl, that's aqueous, really means that it's H plus aqueous ions plus Cl minus aqueous ions, and so I'm making H plus ions in solution. Uh, on the other hand, bases are going to be things that produce OH minus, so if I had something like NaOH and I were to dissolve it, it makes Na plus ions, and it also makes OH minus ions. And because it increases that OH minus concentration, it's considered an Arrhenius base. Now the Arrhenius definition is kind of constrictive. It's only in water. So if I want to use an organic solvent or I'm outside of water, what I usually am going to invoke is something called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. The Bronsted-Lowry definition says that an acid is an H plus donor, a base is an H plus acceptor. Let's take the example of HCl plus NH3. Now, if I were to go ahead and combine this, what I can make is I can make NH4 plus Cl minus. Now, what you'll see here is that the HCl donated this H plus and this NH3 accepted this H plus. And so that's why we consider NH3 a base and HCl an acid. Now, the Lewis definition is an acids are electron pair acceptors, bases are uh, electron pair donators. Uh, don't worry about the Lewis definition right now. It will be something that we'll discuss in Chem 1C. So what I want you guys to worry about is the Arrhenius definition and the Bronsted-Lowry definition. So let's talk about H plus ions in solution. Now this is kind of a misnomer. If I have H plus in the vicinity of water, H2O, what's gonna happen is it's going to form a new bond and I'm gonna make this polyatomic ion, H3O plus. So this is called the hydronium ion and this is what really exists. Now for simplicity's sake, what you'll often see is that H plus aqueous and H3O plus aqueous both of these are used interchangeably. So it's understood that when I say H plus aqueous, that I really mean H3O plus aqueous. Now, whether you choose one or the other depends on how you balance the reaction, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. So let's go ahead and talk about acids. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a generic acid. So a generic acid means I'm just gonna write HA, and this is going to represent any acid. And this is the reason why we talk about acid-base chemistry, and that's because all the acids react very similarly to each other, and so I can go ahead and describe a whole bunch of reactions by using generic formulas. So if I put an acid inside water, what can happen is water is going to act like a base. What's going to happen here is that the H plus is going to be donated to my H2O, which is going to be my H plus acceptor. So I'm going to make H3O plus, I'm going to make A minus. Now, if this is the case, we can talk about conjugates. Conjugates are like domestic partnerships. When we say the word conjugate, it has to be in reference to something else. So what you guys will see is that HA and A minus are considered conjugates of each other. And the reason is, is if I remove an H plus from my acid, I get A minus. Now, what you'll notice is if I run this reaction backwards, well, this H is gonna be donated to this A minus. So if A minus accepts something, it is a base. And because it is related to HA by one proton, it is the conjugate base. So conjugates only differ by one H plus ion. The same thing can be said with H3O plus. So H3O plus is an acid. 
If I go ahead and look at the reaction in the reverse, it donates this H+. So if it donates an H+, it's considered an acid. And what I'll note is that my original base here was H2O. And so that means that H3O plus is the conjugate acid of H2O. And so this is what the conjugate acid base pairs are. They are things that differ by only one H plus. Now I should note that this is still a base and then this is still an acid. The conjugate just tells you that it is related to something else in the reaction. So what I want you guys to do is write this reaction out for me. If I put HCN in the vicinity of water, why don't you guys tell me what's going to be my products and identify conjugate acid base pairs. After you're done, mark the right answer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you should note is that HCN is an acid. It's cyanic acid. And the reason you can tell is usually most acids are going to have an H in the front of their molecular formula. So if that's the case, that this is going to be my acid, that means that H2O is going to act as my base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to donate that H+, and that's going to leave me with Cn-, minus, and that H2O is going to accept that H+, and it's going to become H3O+. And so now what I can say is that HCN is an acid and the conjugate base to this is going to be CN minus. And so this is my first conjugate acid base pair. And H2O was acting as my base. I can go ahead and look on the other side where it got that H plus attached to it. So H3O plus is going to be my conjugate acid. All right, gentle people, let's do one more of these. What happens when I put NH3 in the presence of water? So if you guys remember, I was talking about the definitions of acids and bases, and I mentioned that NH3 is a base. So if NH3 is my base, it's going to accept protons. If it's going to accept protons, and that means that H2O is going to donate those protons, so it is acting as an acid. So if I take one proton and move it to my NH3, and I'll get NH4+, plus, and that means if I remove that proton, I am left with OH-. minus. So now I can do my conjugate acid base pairs, if NH3 is my base, then my conjugate acid is one more proton added to it, which is NH4+. So I noted that H2O is my acid. So my conjugate base is if I remove one proton off of my H2O, which is going to be OH-, and you see both of these species on the product side of this reaction. I hope that made sense, Chem1B. And remember to stay safe.